Hey there everybody, it's Melissa Ramos from Sexy Food Therapy and this month the Sexy Patient Profile is someone who I am really excited about. Um, we have been personal friends, I've also seen her in practice, um, helped her out with her health and she has become a major star on primetime Canadian TV. Miss Carrie Lynn Niels is our Sexy Patient Spotlight of the Month and if you haven't heard about her, she is the lead actor in the new Canadian TV hit series, Seed. Take a look and here's a clip. If I tell people I used a sperm bank, they're gonna think I'm this lonely, desperate, baby crazy woman who could not find a man. That is so not me. So just say that you got drunk, we had unprotected sex, and you got knocked up. I make terrible decisions. People would totally believe that. Well, you know, just to get our story straight, we could. We are not having sex. Okay, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> so um, I actually asked Carrie to be the sexy patient spotlight uh, because of the fact that she actually came to see me before um, for nutrition and acupuncture. Um, so that was, you know, a little while ago. Um, but, you know, can you sort of give a rundown of where your sort of state of mind was before coming to see me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had hit a bit of a rut, I guess, with uh, my health and my diet. And it's those are two, you know, huge hugely important things in my life and I wanted to get that back on track and so um, I had met you um, on a personal level before yeah. and uh, decided that I would come in for a little visit and honestly turn my life around. Yeah and it was great because um, you know I remember you some of the issues that you had were just sort of like a lot of allergies that you were you were sort of grappling yes. with. Yeah, that I didn't realize were allergies. That was the, the funny part. I didn't realize that those symptoms were actually uh, allergic reactions. And so, like, how did they actually end up manifesting in your system from an emotional level? Because I think a lot of people, they, they think allergies and they think, oh, maybe my skin will break out. But I don't think that people put enough, um, uh, I guess, weight on the fact that allergies do have a, a very large emotional impact on people. At least I know it does with myself and a lot of my other patients. So... Yeah, huge, huge emotional impact. I, um, I'm a typically very emotional person, <laughs> but uh, when I was when I was sort of when we were starting the process, you asked a lot of really great and to the point questions that I couldn't avoid recognizing that what I was putting in my body was spiking my emotions like crazy, and I was having um, you know almost manic like reactions to things where I would be ecstatic and then I would be crestfallen and um, and on top of that just my energy level like there were days when I just didn't want to get out of bed and that wasn't necessarily emotional it was just that I felt like I didn't have the energy and then that turned into an emotional thing as well um, I've never really been an emotional eater um, if anything I'm, I'm an emotional non-eater when I get emotional about things my stomach um, hurts or gets nauseous and I can't eat mm. uh, but again, like learning how to how to deal with that, and then how in those moments to put the right nutrients into my body um, to turn that around is is was so key. So, did you find it challenging when you were switching over? Because I think that there's this also this conception from people that like, oh, you know, it takes so much work and it's so much effort. Like, did you find that way when you were sort of doing the switch over to the plan that I provided to you? No, I, I expected to when when you sent me the plan and it was as many pages as it was. I it's so easy to get overwhelmed with all of the you know the stuff that just is second nature for you, but complete jargon for me. Um, but then sitting down with it and, and having the ability to to consult with you further on it, um, and I think even one of the times you came with me when I went to get all of my supplements and. Yeah. Um, and that was just so helpful. And, and then I was drawn to the research. I wanted to know why these supplements were helping. And, mm. and, and I got so curious with the whole thing that it wasn't as, as hard a transition. Also, I think you just get to the point where it doesn't matter how hard it is. You just have to do it. If you want to feel better, you just have to do it. Yeah. And that's a huge part is that there really does require um, the commitment with it. So, um, during the plan, what are some of the things that you love the most about it? Like, was there something the, that you were like surprised about, or what did you? Feel? The recipes, I, 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 I still, I still make a lot of them. Um, just having that 
ease. You know, it's hard when you're, when you are so used to your own convenience and your own life and then realizing that those things are actually the things that are making you run less efficiently. Um, then where do you go? Where do you turn? Uh, what do you make for yourself? How do you cook? And it wasn't at the time, it wasn't even just for myself. It was for my partner and, and both of us loving being in the kitchen. Um, yeah, it was that, that was the best, that was the best, the best part I think of the whole, of the whole package. And then on top of that, seeing the results, waking up, feeling better and better every morning and, um, and carrying through, like I haven't, I haven't been in to see you necessarily uh, recently, but I still follow the plan and still use so many of the supplements and have kept with me all of the knowledge that I learned through doing the plan and starting that process. So it's become really, you know, for the most part, a lifestyle at this point. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. And it feeds right into my activity, my level of activity and, and my choice of exercise. And it just is all very cohesive. Yeah. And for someone like yourself, like, you know, you're on this amazing new show uh, called Seed. Um, and I just love it, uh, you know, and it's obviously being in the public spotlight now. You know, I, I've I actually walked by um, Dundas Square. And for those of you who don't live in Toronto, Dundas Square is like sort of the Torontonian sort of version, I suppose, of New York, like of the of Times Square, um, but I remember seeing like a picture of like seed up there, and it's great because you're all over, so you really have a lot of pressure um, to stay looking fit and and feeling great and having the energy to to go about your day to day. Um, so you know, help us understand a little bit about seed because I want people to understand because I you know I've watched you know some clips online on the seed Facebook page. Um, and the stuff, cause I don't have TV, I actually watch everything online. So, um, yeah. the stuff is just hysterical to me. So can you give us a little bit of a synopsis about what the show is about? Absolutely. So the show follows a bachelor bartender named Harry who, uh, in his past, um, had donated sperm for money basically. And, uh, the show picks up when hit one of, uh, his offspring from a family, um, finds him, cracks the data the database at the sperm bank and finds out who he is, tracks him down. At the same time, a, um, a, one of his other offspring, a daughter from another family, also finds him. Um, and then my character, Rose, is introduced um, as a woman who's really quite done with the dating scene but really does want to start a family and chooses the route of artificial insemination. And coincidentally, on her way to the clinic, it does meet Harry and... Um, in his very hairy way, tries to pick Rose up, and Rose <laughs> declines, and ends up very coincidentally choosing his donation. <laughs> so it's a it's a great show, and it's just so awesome to um, see you literally just you know explode into the spotlight at such a prime time level. And I know you know there's nothing. There's no doubt in my mind that the show is going to continue to go on because it's just hysterical. So I know that you must be facing a lot of pressure in that res in that respect to, you know, look and feel sexy and healthy and so forth and be vibrant because you're always in front of the camera now, um, whether it's yeah. for press events or what have you. Um, so I guess, you know, I know you're really busy, So, but I want to ask you one more question is, um, what do you feel was the main difference um, to coming to see me, um, you know, and following the whole sexy food therapy, uh, ideals. What, what do you feel is the difference between me and say going to someone else that you might've seen in the past? Um, I, I feel like the accessibility, not only, um, how accessible you are to me as your, as your patient, but also the accessibility of the information you're giving me. Uh, I never feel overwhelmed. I never feel, um, like it's too much. I'll never understand. Um, and I know that I, I feel like I, I'm on a team mm. and that, that's, that's just a big part of, of how I run my life. I, I like to be a part of a team and, um, and I feel that way with you. I feel, even though, again, like, I mean, it's been months, um, but I know that if ever I'm having a problem with something or something even in the plan is sort of shifted, I can contact you. Always. And that's <laughs> that sort of, that sort of relationship, the personal relationship, I think sets, sets sexy food apart from anything else I would have done before. That's wonderful. Well, you know, I really appreciate your time. I know you're crazy busy. Um, obviously, we met on a personal level uh, a good while ago. Jeez, I would say probably last summer. 
Last summer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's been, it's been well, a while. Well, because I was gone, right? I, I left. I left late September and I've been away essentially since then. So Two summers ago, actually. I'm getting my, my years mixed up. Yeah, two summers ago. I guess it was two spring. It would have been 2011. Yeah. That I, yeah. Wow. And I mean, you've done, you've been doing so well and I'm just so happy and so proud. You look fantastic. Thank Um, you. Thank you for that. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, you know, when you're back in Toronto, please do let me know. I am Skyping in with you and you are in where? Los Angeles crazy girl. <laughs> All right. Well, you keep rocking on. And for everyone out there, um, if you don't know Carrie Lynn Niels, you need to know uh, who this amazing, beautiful actor is. Um, again, she is the lead actor in Seed. It's on primetime uh, Canada on City. Um, yep. So if they're in, so what time, because I always watch it online, so I never really know what time it's on. Uh, Monday nights at 8.30 p.m. Perfect. Thank you so much, Carrie, and uh, I hope you have an awesome time in sunny LA. It is freezing cold here in Toronto oh, right it's now. Beautiful here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try and bring the sun home with me. <laughs> All right. Take care of yourself. You too. Thanks, Bye. Melissa. Bye.